So one of the core practices of One Church is outreach. And what does it mean, outreach? That's kind of one of those, those weird things. But I, I think one of the best ways to express what we mean by outreach is that we look at the world that we're navigating and living in, and we see problems and issues and needs that we would love to meet. And the way to meet those needs is to show that we care. But sometimes it, it can be really challenging to kind of figure out how to show that, that you care. And we may feel really limited in our ability to show care. Because let's face it, when it's based on me as an individual, my ability to show care is very, very limited. I may want to help, but I may not have the resources or the means to help people who are in need. People who may be experiencing a physical need, a financial need, an emotional or spiritual need. And yet, as we come together as a church and as we pray for one and really connect to the heartbeat of God, God loves to reach out through us. And so that changes things. Now, recently, uh, I met someone named Lucy. Say hi, Lucy. Hi. Hi, Lucy is incredible. We love Lucy. Lucy broke her leg um, because she's a ninja. We're keeping that on the down low. <laughs> Um, but has a, a broken leg and a cast on her foot. And so I really wanted to show Lucy that I care. And so I, I have this, a, a care bear. I love care bears. Now, Lucy, how old are you? I'm eight. Lucy's eight, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Lucy's eight, so you're down with care bears. Yeah, I love them. So if I were to give you this care bear, would you feel like I care? Yes. Okay, but I want to give you this care bear. I want to give you this Care Bear, but I just, I can't quite reach. You ever feel like this? Like you, you have something and you want to show you care and it matters and you just can't quite get it to the person. Anybody ever felt that way before? Yes. It's so frustrating. And yet here's the thing, like when we do this on our own, this is what it's often like. We're, we're reaching out, but we just can't reach far enough. People want care, we have care to share, um, but we just can't get it there and it's more than we can bear. What happened? <laughs> and so we need, some, we need some help. Now, when we're a part of the church, though, when we're a part of the church, though, and we are connected to God and to people and to the mission of Jesus, it looks a little different because then we are armed. <laughs> and can yeah. reach out. and really show we care. And so what, what we ultimately are as the church is we are an extension of God's love. God's love moves through us. And so as we pray for one, it goes like this. God, please give me one person to share your love with. I'd love for you to pray that with us. Let's try it together. God, please give me one person to share your love with. Okay, now when we pray for one, we connect to God, to the very heartbeat of God. We start to care about what God cares about. And we receive his love. And now his love is meant to move through us. What God does is he reaches out through us. And so we are actually the extension of God's love moving through us. And he reaches into our world. But we also connect to people. Because now we actually have something to share. And as we connect to people, to the church, and we have now some ability to share in greater ways, because that's the cool thing about the nature of the church. We care about people, we're sharing God's love with people, but we're also connected to the mission of Jesus, which is this city being built on a hill. You are the light of the world. We are a city being built on a hill. And as we do that together, now we have the ability to meet more needs in more ways because it's not just me as an individual, but it's me connected to God and me connected to his church. Isn't that powerful? Yes. And so that's why outreach as it moves through the local church is such a an powerful and incredible thing. This is the, the, the final message, uh, second to last message in, in our series called City on a Hill. And it's our message on outreach, but I do want us to, to quote our memory verse together. It's found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And so let's read that together. It says, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. And so as we think about this reality of who we are, the light of the world, a city built on a hill, a place of refuge, hope, a, a beacon of hope. We look at our world and, and people are looking to us and saying, okay, I, I, I need some help. And through the context of the church, God is able to reach out through us and we get to do this together. 
And so as we consider outreach, um, I do want you to know a little kind of who, what, where, when, why, how, who is outreach for? Well, it's for everyone who's a part of the family of God. That I, I want you to know that if you have said yes to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you're an adopted child of God, and, and you have a room in his house and a seat at his table, that no matter who you are or what you've done or what's been done to you, that God wants to reach out through you. I mean, this is what God does. He's in the, the outreach business for God so loved us that he sent his son to us. He reached out to us. He didn't say, hey, good luck getting to me. He's like, I'm coming for you. And so God sent his son, the, the flesh and blood, love personified God in flesh here on earth. And now we can look around us at, at the needs and say, well, what about all these needs that are here? Who's going to meet them? And we can even get mad at God. You ever done this one? God, where were you on this one? Where were you on that one? Shake an angry fist at God. There's so many needs. God, where were you on this one? And he's like, I'm right there with you. He gives us his Holy Spirit, Christ in us, God in us. We are now the church, the flesh and blood of Jesus here on earth, the physical representation of God here on earth. And when we see needs being unmet and things going undone and people being unloved and care not being expressed or shown, guess what God's plan for that is? Us. That's a woohoo moment, by the way. Because a lot of people out there think that God doesn't have a plan. That he's just gone, oh, well, never mind. Good luck, guys. But that's not true. God has a plan. It's his church, and his church is wonderful. His church is incredible. His church is the family of God, and we are his flesh and blood uh, here on earth. And so God reaches out through us, and so that's why it's so important to connect to God, connect to people, be a part of the church, and connect to the mission of Jesus so that we can reach out together. And if we don't do the things that God has called us to do and reach out when he tells us to reach out, then those things go undone. That's a really important thing to realize and be aware of. God loves to meet needs and there are very real needs in our world. And when we talk about our world, sure, the, the, the whole uh, globe and everything around the world and sure in our nation, but let's get real. Our world, our homes, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools, the communities that we live, work, and play in, this is our world. And God is present in our world because he's present in you. And when we reach out with the love of God and we do that together, then our worlds are transformed and changed. So outreach is for everyone. What is outreach? It's God reaching out through us. Um, here at One Church, we, we really take this seriously. We have one of our primary leadership teams. It's called the Outreach Leadership Team, or the OLT. And the OLT has one of the best jobs you can ever imagine. So one of the primary roles of the OLT is to take One Church's tithe. Okay, so One Church tithes. We don't just talk to you about giving, but as a church, we practice this because we're serious about outreach. And so 10%, at least 10% of everything that comes in, we're pushing out to help support and bless other local outreach partners and regional outreach partners and global outreach partners um, to help resource and provide for the needs that are, that are in our world. And so uh, this year alone, we're gonna be able to give, uh, invest over a half million dollars into our outpost outreach efforts, which is so cool. It's a blast to get to do that. So the OLT, they get to look at the requests and the needs and give away a lot of money. That's a fun job. Giving away free stuff's great. It's a fun job. And then to evaluate those partnerships and to look and say, okay, well, how can we strengthen them? And how, how can we do more than even just provide money? How can we come alongside you? How can we best support you? What are the, the opportunities that are there? And so we love the outpost model too, by the way, um, as yes, we are a, a, an online church, meaning that we are connected online all the time and we can worship together online, but we also have local outposts in different communities. And then we reach out into those communities. And so because of that physical presence there of the local church, we have an understanding and idea of the needs that are there and which ones that we could best meet as one church. And so uh, the OLT uh, looks into that. We are currently partnering with 15 organizations um, to uh, share uh, and invest in, 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 in our outreach. 
And I love that we're really becoming known as the church that loves God and loves people and really cares about the communities and the places where we are. I think about our newest outposts uh, that are in Rutland, Vermont, and Franklin, New Hampshire. Um, already very quickly, just, you know, a little over a year in, uh, like around the communities there, it's like when something needs to happen, they're, they're starting to, to call one church. Uh, because they know we, we want to be involved and we care and we want to invest there. And we have opportunities to do that. Just recently in, in Franklin, we got to and be a part of their community days and, you know, help share God's love with over 150 people. And in doing this, like there are opportunities after opportunities. And so we get to do this and doing it together is such a powerful thing. And so one church is serious about outreach. Uh, where should you do that? Well, where you live, work and play. And so as a church, we, we get to do that in our communities that we're in and the region that we're in and the world that we live in. But then as individuals, um, God can reach out to, to people who, who that we live in the same house with or in the same neighborhood with. Um, when should we do this? Uh, well, clearly all the time, because there's always needs and God's always moving. But like anything else, it's really good to have a plan and a strategy. Like we could just say as a church, hey, we want to be serious about outreach. But if we don't have a plan and a strategy, then it doesn't happen. If we don't have partners, if we don't have opportunities for people to volunteer and connect and use their time and, and talents and abilities and a place to invest uh, the money that's been entrusted to one church to, to pour out back into our communities, if there's no plan for that, it doesn't happen. And so as a church, we have a plan for that. As individuals, I hope you'd have a plan for that. Uh, it does, and that won't take away from the spontaneous things. That's the thing sometimes people say is, well, you know, if I'm committed, then I can't be, I can't be spontaneous. It, sometimes people say that like in relationships. Like, I don't want to have a date night because I just want to be spontaneous. How about you do both, you jackalope, okay? <laughs> let's get, like, why not? Let's do, let's get serious about this. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And so let's do the plan stuff and then be spontaneous on top of it and God really moves in powerful ways through that. And so how do you do this? Well, praying for one is a great way to do this. Um, it's a start, um, but then pay attention, get your head up, look for opportunities, uh, engage in the world around you, ask questions like, how can I help? What do you need? Um, what's going on? Um, can I help make a connection? Don't try to do it all yourself, but be a part of something greater than yourself. And why? Because if we don't do it, it goes undone. And I really want people to understand and feel and know the love of Jesus and the care that God has for them in every place we have an outpost and everywhere that we are and God's love moves through us. So let's do that church. Can we get a woohoo for that? Woo -hoo. All right. So when we think about outreach, outreach does connect us to God um, because God reached out first. And so this is really cool to think about. God reached out first. This is in his nature. So God reaches out to us. Now we're his church. God wants to reach out through us. This is what he does. So we're going to spend a little time in 1 John chapter 4. In verse 7, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And so we have the, the very nature of love expressed to us through him giving his son Jesus to us. In the book of Romans, it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. And so this is what God does. He doesn't say, hey, get your act together and get everything figured out. And when you deserve it, then I'm going to come and love you. What he does is he comes for it. Because that's the thing we do sometimes with, with outreach. We think, well, uh, when, when they get in a position to, to deserve it or earn it or know what to do with it, then we'll reach out. No, that's not the nature of God. The nature of God is to reach out, to reach out first. And so when, when we uh, are, are a part of what God is doing, that, that we know that we are loved by him and that the love that we're sharing is a love that he has given us, this changes everything. Because I, I know every one of us wants to love. I've never met a person who wasn't interested in love, that, that didn't need love and didn't have a deep desire and need to share love. But our love falls so short because our human love is short. 
We want to reach out, but we can't reach because our human love falls short. The desire is there, but we just can't do it because it runs out. It's temporary. It's fleeting. It's conditional. It's transactional. It keeps score. It has power plays. It says, I'll I'll only reach out or I'll meet you halfway. We do this all the time in our relationships. We we even say silly things like marriage is a 50-50 proposition. Well, that marriage is over. Because what happens if somebody can only go 49% of the way? They're, they're sick or there's a problem or, or something's happened. Well, I guess, I guess that's over. You didn't do your part. That's not love. Love goes all the way. Jesus didn't say, hey, I'll take half your sins in my body on the cross. You're responsible for the other half. I'll do half. He says, I'm taking it all. All of it, and I will put it to death in my body. Everything you've done, plus everything that's ever been done to you, all that pain and heartache that we carry with us, he took it in his body, and he set us free from it. This is the nature of the love of God. It reaches out all the way. He came into our world, and he's still present in our world because of his church. In fact, while Jesus just got to live for you know 33 years and have a public ministry for three years in a very small region of the planet, now his church is all over the world and is bigger than ever and is growing faster than ever. I got a way, way to go, God, right there. Way to go, God. You got a good plan, God. I'm telling you right now, his church is a good plan. Good plan, God. Way to go. And he is reaching out. And so we reach out with his love, his love that is unending, his love that is limitless, his love that keeps no records of wrong. It doesn't keep score. His love that is perfect, his love that isn't transactional, his love that isn't conditional, his love that drives out fear and sets us free. This is the love that he's given us, and he is reaching out that love and extending that love to our family and friends and neighbors, coworkers, classmates, to all of our ones. Thank you, God. What a great plan. And so outreach connects us to God because he reached out first. Outreach connects us to people because because God reaches people through us. This is his model. He's not writing, you know, uh, messages in the sky, although the sky is a pretty good message. He's not writing it in the clouds because sometimes people wonder about that. Why, why don't he just, you know, write it in the clouds? Because he's written it on the hearts of people. And this is how he shares it. God's all about uh, expressing his love through people. We continue reading the next verse, verse 11. It says, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one, who has ever, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Guys, I want you to think about that. That's a pretty, pretty rad thought right there. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. That checks out. That makes sense. God loves me. Who am I to deny God's love to somebody else? We can play all the silly little games we want and say, well, you know, it's because I'm so much better than them and I'm so lovable and they're so unlovable. So of course God loves me and I hate you. It's ludicrous. It makes no sense. And, you, and we can't play these little games where we say, you know what, God, I really love you, but I hate people. We can still be friends, right, God? He says, uh, no, it doesn't work that way. Not because he's mean, but because this is the nature of it. it like, it's like, like telling me, Bo, I love you, but I, I hate your kids. Bo, I love you, but your three kids, are, they're, they're just like little devil children. Bo, I love you, but the thought of your kids makes me want to vomit. <laughs> You want to hang out tomorrow? No. I don't. Because I love my kids. And God loves his kids, especially the unlovable ones. You ever think about that? That lonely people are oftentimes lonely for a reason? And who better to eradicate loneliness and reach out and the church, the physical representation of God here on this earth, God in flesh expressed in his love through his church to people that other people are like, that one's a tough nut. That one's a hard one to be around. Since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, 
But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. I'm gonna tell you right now, every time we love with the love of Jesus and we love with the, the love of God and, and we share God's love with our ones, they get a glimpse of God because God is love. I want you to think about that. Every time we love with the love of God, people get a glimpse of God because God is love. The reason people haven't seen God or haven't experienced the, uh, the city on a hill and the light of the world is because we keep putting a veil over love. We keep holding it back. We keep withdrawing it. We keep making it conditional and transactional and keep saying, hey, when you clean up your act and get your act together, you know, then you can come be a part of our little Jesus club and then maybe we'll accept you if you, if you do the things we do and you talk like we talk, you know, then you can be a part and then we'll show you love. And they're like, they, they can't see God in that because God isn't even in that. But when we love with his love, people get a glimpse of God. And he is beautiful and wonderful and holy and righteous and, and pure and powerful and mighty to save. And he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love, abounding in goodness and mercy. This is the, the, this is the God that we want people to see. God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. I think, I think that's incredible. Like God's love exists and God's love is there, but love unexpressed isn't complete. Do you think about that? Love not expressed isn't complete. And the church is the expression of God's love to our world. This is important. This is why we reach out and it connects us to people and so I want to encourage you to share the gift of love. Be intentional about it. Love really is a gift, and it's something that we get to give. And so as we think about that, share the gift of love, do it gratefully. Here's the thing about grateful people. Grateful people are rarely stingy. Stingy people sit around and complain about what they don't have. I mean, you think about it in terms of like, like finances, right? I don't have anything, and, and, and everybody's against me, and, and, and I don't have enough. The scarcity mindset. But when you're grateful, oh, no, no, I have, I have plenty. And, and oh, what I have is sufficient. And oh, I'm, I'm so thankful for what has been provided to me. Then we become generous through that. And we give through that. So, so be grateful for God's love and how he has lavished his love upon you. And then we can share his love without being stingy or worrying about it running out somehow or not being enough. We share God's love, the gift of God's love intentionally. And so be intentional about it. Without the plan, it just, it doesn't happen. The generosity doesn't occur. So we make a plan and then we, we follow through on the plan. And so there are planned ways that we are going to be generous and, and serve and, and reach out and then be intentional about looking for needs. And, and like, do you know, I mean, like, this would be a really important thing. Like, do you know uh, uh, that if this, this one particular person calls or texts you that you're stopping everything and you're doing it? This is like, I have ones that I pray for and there are certain people that I know if this person calls or texts, no matter what I'm doing, I'm like, excuse me, I need to take this. Because they are on my heart and whatever's going on there, this matters more than anything else that's happening because I've been praying for this person. That's what praying for one does. What do you need? Recently, somebody, somebody told me, they're like, hey, um, I'm going to be calling you pretty soon because um, I, I want your help with something. And I was like, okay, cool. What, what do you need? And like, I'm going to call you. And I'm like, well, I want, what do you need? And they're like, I'm going to call you. I'm following them around. What do you need? I'm going to call you. The next day, I'm like, hey, you haven't called me yet. When are you going to call me? What do you need? Because I care. I'm excited. I'm not going, oh, no, what will it be? And, oh, no, will it be more? You know, it's like, what do you need? I, even, I just want to know. And so be intentional about it. Um, share God, the gift of God's love freely. No strings attached. A lot of times we do this. It's like, okay, now I did this. Now you better behave the way I want you to. Now I did this, so you owe me. You're, you're eternally indebted to me. Now I, I did this, and so there, there's an expectation of how your life will change. Here's the thing. Like, let's let God do his work. Right? 
God, God's the one who, who saves. God's, God's the one who radically transforms. God's the one who heals. But he reaches out through us. And he loves people through us. And we can enjoy what God is doing through us and then leave the results up to him. I, it's so freeing and so wonderful. And you'll have so much fun because it is a lot of fun to give freely like this. And then also share the gift of God's love tangibly. Tangibly. Remember that you are God's physical presence in your world. So we want to do this tangibly. By the way, um, the first letter of all those words spell gift. That was my gift to you. <laughs> Gratefully, intentionally, freely, tangibly. Share God's love. It is a gift. Now, our outreach also connects us to mission. God wants to reach everyone. And so God's love comes into us and moves through us, and God wants to reach everyone. There's no one that he doesn't want to reach. For God so loved the world, the world, all the world. So the next verse, verse 13 says, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. I hope and pray that you will know and rely on the love God has for you. Know and rely. To know is to, to say yes to Jesus and to know that God so loved you that he sent his son Jesus for you. To know is to know that yes, you need a savior and you can't save yourself and that Jesus is an incredible way. He is the way, the truth, and the life and, and he has made a glorious, wonderful way for us to have access to the Father, to be adopted sons and daughters and members of his family. To know is to know who God is and who we are, that he is love and we are objects of his love. But now let's rely on his love. Let's not go our own way, doing our own thing, living our own lives, not only to be saved by God, but to live under the lordship of Jesus, where he is the king of kings and lord of lords, and that we are relying on his love because his love not only saves us, his love sustains us, and his love compels us. Jesus said this, uh, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. When his love is in you, when you know his love, then his love is meant to move through you. And so we love with the love of Jesus, like the love of Jesus. And that is huge. We love with the love of Jesus, like the love of Jesus. Now, how did Jesus express his love for us? He laid down his life on a cross. Which is why Jesus said that if we want to be his disciples, then this is what is required of us. It is a gift that we freely receive. But in order to receive this gift, we lay down our lives, take up our crosses, and follow him. Because if we are to follow him, crosses are required. The daily dying to self. To love with the love of Jesus, like the love of Jesus. To rely on him. And so right now, here's an opportunity for you to know and rely on the love of Jesus. When we share in communion, this is what we're remembering. How God expressed his love to us. That Jesus, when he was here on earth, he took bread and he broke it. And he offered it to his friends and he said, this is my body which is given for you. So that we could know and experience his love. He says, take and eat. So let's eat together. Jesus also took the cup and he said, this cup is the cup of a new covenant, a new promise, a new relationship. Where not only do we know the love of God, but we rely. Where we drink this cup, we're saying yes to Jesus, not only as Savior, but also as Lord, but not just any Lord, the Lord of Lords, not just any King, the King of Kings. And so we drink to the King. Father, as we 
know and rely on your love. I pray that just a prayer of thanksgiving for your plan to reach our world and for your love to move through us. Thank you for one church and the way you reach out. And God, I pray that you would show us how you're reaching out and want to reach out through us to our ones and then also through all of one church. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.